Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. And these are numbers are not exponentials. They are very different numbers. We have pi over 4 on one side and the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 on the other side. So we're going to find out which number is greater. So when you look at a number like this, I know a lot of people are saying, like, why, why not use a calculator? That's not the point. It's not fun. When you use a calculator, it does the work for you. The point is, using the tools that we have, number theory, algebra, geometry, whatever we can use, to find out which answer is greater. All right, and for this problem, uh, pi over 4 kind of gives us a clue about it. And uh, we're going to be using geometry. Okay, let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. So here is my setup for this problem. We have a unit circle. Well, not really, but it's kind of like half of it. So we have a circle whose radius is 1. It's centered at 0, 0, which is the origin. So its radius is 1. That's what matters. And we are going to use it to compare two numbers. What does this have to do with that? Well, pi over 4 kind of should give you an idea. We're going to be using some trigonometry. We're going to be using some arc length, you know, so on and so forth. Like radiance. That kind of reminds you of radiance, right? And as some people don't like radians, I'm not a big fan either, but we're going to use geometry here. So for those, whole, for those folks who like geometry, I hope this also uh, works for you because uh, we're going to be using some ge geometry tools. Anyways, so I talk too much, let's, let's stop. The radius is 1, great. And uh, we have, by the way, I forgot to tell you, in this setup, we have pi over 4 degrees. Okay. Pi over 4 in radians is equivalent to 45 degrees. So we kind of have like one eighth of the circle, you know, kind of separated here. And I have that blue line, which we're going to talk about later, because that is the critical segment that we are going to use. Great. So this is really cool because this angle also measures pi over 4. So we get an isosceles triangle, which is also right at the same time. So by using Pythagorean theorem, we find that, let's call this point O, this, let's call this A, and let's call this B, and we can call this point C. Okay, so we can kind of name the segments and so on and so forth. So, how do I find OA, right? OA is one of the legs, but this is isosceles, therefore the legs are equal, so you can kind of call them X, and then use Pythagorean theorem, but Pythagorean theorem tells us, or special triangles tells us that, hey, X root 2 is supposed to be 1. Therefore, x is supposed to be 1 over root 2, which can be written as root 2 over 2. Great. So we found x. And uh, OC, now focus on OC. OC is also a radius, right? It's from the center to uh, the edge of the circle. So it is the radius. So OC equals 1. Awesome. How can I use that information? Well, I can use it to find AC, not the air conditioning, AC is a segment from A to C by subtracting uh, OC minus OA, right? OC minus OA is equal to AC. Why do I need to find AC? Because I want to focus on the blue line. That is the critical part. Uh, and I, can, I know AB. If I can find AC, then things will be much, much better. All right, so let's go ahead and subtract them. OC is 1. And what is OA? OA is x, which is root 2 over 2. So that is ac. ac is 1 minus root 2 over 2. Let's simplify this a little bit. 2 minus root 2 over 2. So does that kind of ring a bell? Because remember, we were trying to compare the square root of 2 minus root 2 with pi over 4, but we didn't get the square root, but no worries. We'll get there. So now I have ac, and then I have ab. And notice that this is a right triangle, because it is 90 degrees. So I can find BC by using Pythagorean theorem again. BC squared is equal to AC squared plus AB squared. AC squared plus AB squared. So BC squared can be written as AC. I know it's 2 root 2 minus 2, 2 root 2, root, two minus root 2 over 2. Okay, sorry, I couldn't say that. Plus, and AB is X, which is root 2 over 2. But I need to square that. All right, great. Let's go ahead and square it. Since they have a common denominator, I can just go ahead and add the numerators. The first one squared is going to be a squared my, minus 2ab plus b squared. So it's going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6, minus 4 root 2. 
And then this one is just going to be a 2, all right, divided by 4. Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this. 8 minus 4 root 2 divided by 4. Hey, everything is divisible by 4. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to get 2 minus root 2 from here for BC squared. But guess what? If you square it both sides and knowing that BC is a length, it's supposed to be positive, BC becomes square root of 2 minus 2, which is, which is one of the numbers we are trying to compare with the other one. So our number 2 minus root 2, the square root of that popped up as BC. So this is BC. Okay. So BC is equal to square root of 2 minus root 2. How can I compare it to pi over 4? What does this have to do with that, right? Well, here's the thing. You have a segment and you kind of have like a curvy little piece, right? Geodesic, is that what it's called? Something like geodesic. So you kind of have two lengths, but one of them is kind of curvy. And the other one is the straight uh, distance from one point to the other. So you kind of have this and you have the you have the bump. So um, we have the BC. So now we know that this length is square root of 2 minus root 2. Obviously, in this case, the bump piece section piece, or you can call that, I guess, uh, an arc. The arc is longer than the segment, obviously. Uh, and what is the length of that arc? How do you find that arc length? Well, since this is pi over 4 degrees, it is 1 eighth of the circle, the circumference, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, which is 2 pi because the radius is 1. If you divide it by 8, you get pi over 4, which is the length of this arc. And you can safely say that that arc length is greater than our number. Therefore, pi over 4 is going to be greater than square root of 2 minus root 2. Oh man, I forgot to include the numerical values in this. Anyways, you can find out. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.